A grand tour of the Alps was once a fashionable journey to enlightenment, the final touch in the education of a young gentleman. Today, it is all of that and more. Better still, it is available to a much broader clientele. The modern Grand Tour combines the best of five countries, Austria, Germany, Italy, Slovenia, and Switzerland. And yields an impressive array of scenic beauty and cultural diversity. Uh, this is a Fladen. All along the way, English is understood, if not spoken fluently. The Grand Tour is roughly 3,000 miles long and can be traveled by car or train or a combination of both. At a leisurely pace, it is a month-long journey. The itinerary links six main Alpine gateways. Zurich, Munich, Vienna, Ljubljana, Milan, and Geneva. There are direct flights into each of these cities, so the tour can be split into six shorter, separate trips. Each of the six legs of the journey has a distinct story to convey. Zurich to Munich. Zurich is the cultural capital of Switzerland and one of the world's leading financial centers. Though thoroughly modern, this vibrant city keeps its traditions alive. Light and color play upon buildings that are unassumingly beautiful, reflecting Zurich's historic richness. The country's bountiful history is featured in colorful displays at the National Museum. Grossmünster, the great cathedral, was founded by Charlemagne in the 11th century. After a fire in the 18th century, the twin towers were crowned with their characteristic hats. Zurich is also known for worldly pleasures. Its Bahnhofstrasse lures shoppers from all corners of the globe. The Old Town is situated along both banks of the Limat River. It dates back to the first century BC, when the Romans established a trading post. Surrounded by town walls up until the 19th century, it remains well preserved to the present day.
From Zurich, the Grand Tour heads east into the rolling hills of the Appenzell countryside. This region proudly preserves its cultural heritage. Maria is doing the typical hand embroidery of Appenzell. This hand embroidery was very famous until 1920, and they did different handkerchiefs, tablecloths, and very special it was for the Appenzell costume. Every canton in Switzerland has its own costume. This is the typical Appenzell costume I wore, and I think it's the most beautiful of all over in Switzerland. You can see the hand embroidery over here and the embroidery in the gold and in the white top. Of course, this is a weekday costume and we also have the Sunday costume, which is worn only for church. And in there, you will find a lot more of hand embroidery. The Appenzell men's costume is one of the oldest in Switzerland at all. Uh, it has never changed in all these years. And it has a lot of embroidery on the shirt and also on the vest. The instrument Johannes is playing is called the Hackbrett. This is a very traditional old instrument which belongs to the Appenzell string music. It is a very old instrument, about 2,000 years old and it comes from the Hungarian music. His father started to build this instrument again, and now Johannes is building them himself. Lindau enjoys an idyllic setting on an island in the waters of Lake Constance. The borders of three Alpine countries converge. The first stop in Bavaria is Oberstdorf, a lovely spa where the mountains seem to rise from the very edge of town. Further east lies Neuschwanstein, New Swan Rock, the most famous castle of King Ludwig II. The swan is an ancient symbol of purity, in the epic story of Lohengrin, the swan was the last protector of the Holy Grail. It was also the emblem on the coat of arms worn by some medieval knights. King Ludwig never finished building Neuschwanstein but what he did complete is part of his unique legacy. From its lofty seat, Neuschwanstein overlooks the castle of Hohenschwangau, where the king spent much of his youth. In the nearby region, called Parsons Corner, the pilgrimage church, Die Wies, is the greatest masterpiece of Bavarian Rococo. It was built to house a statue of Jesus that appeared to weep and was found near this spot by a farmer in 1738. The village of Oberammergau is known for its passion play and also for its painted houses. Originally, Walls were worked on while the clay was still wet.
this mural tells the story of Hansel and Gretel. A statue illustrates how Oberammergau woodcarvers brought their goods to other areas during the Middle Ages. It is a craft still very much alive, inspired by both clerical and non-clerical themes. Many hotels in the Alps, such as Hotel Alta Post, are former horse exchanges, dating back to the days when the mail was still carried on horseback. A short drive from Oberammergau awaits Linderhof, a castle King Ludwig did finish, cast in gold and white and set in lush gardens. Garmisch Partenkirchen lies at the foot of the Zugspitze, Germany's highest peak. It is the nation's best known alpine resort. Munich to Vienna. Munich, the capital of Bavaria for seven centuries, offers a rich tapestry of impressions. The city was founded by monks in the 8th century, and its symbol is a child in a monk's habit, the Munchner Kindel. Worldly elegance is reflected in the Alter Hof, the first ducal residence of the Bavarian rulers. St. Peter is the oldest church, site of the first settlement of the region. Distances in the city are measured from St. Mary's Column, in the center of Marienplatz Square, erected to celebrate the end of the Thirty-Year War in the 17th century. Also during the 17th century, the Church of St. Cayetan, known as the Teatino Church, was built by Italian architect Agostino Barelli. <laughs> Munich's open-air market is one of the largest in Europe a popular meeting place during the day. <laughs> Here, the Maypole marks the city center as is customary in Bavarian towns and villages. Weisswurst, or white sausage, is made of veal and served with a special mustard. Bavarians traditionally indulge in a snack of Weisswurst and beer before the noon bells. The glockenspiel in the town hall spire at Marienplatz first rung in 1908. With 43 bells and a range of three and a half octaves, it is the largest of its kind in Germany. The 
The first scene depicts Duke William V and Renate von Lothringen on their wedding day in 1568, observing a jousting tournament. Then follows the Cooper's Dance, commemorating the fact that barrel makers were the first to dance in Munich after a visitation of the plague. To this day, the Munich barrel makers can be seen dancing and frolicking every seven years. <laughs> Extending over 700 yards in length, Nymphenburg is the largest Baroque palace in Germany. Italian and Bavarian artists worked over 100 years to complete it. Within the park grounds, the miniature palace, Amalienburg, is considered one of the world's great examples of Rococo art. is dotted with lovely lake resorts, such as Prien on Chiemsee Lake, and cozy villages like Wright in Winkel and Oberwussen, with mountains close by rising to dramatic heights. Schliersee is another popular lake resort, and so is Spitzingsee. Here, choices of outdoor activities abound. Just over the Aachen Pass, the spa of Bad Tultz strikes an historic accent with cobblestone streets and pastel colored buildings. No place in the Alps is as comfortably embedded in the mountains as Innsbruck, the capital of Austria's Tyrol. This distinguished city preserves a balance between medieval and high Rococo art. The golden roof, with 2,600 gilded copper tiles, was built in 1500 to serve as a court box for Emperor Maximilian. The triumphal arch, framed against the mountains, was built in 1765 to commemorate the wedding of Leopold II.
just outside of Innsbruck. The Stubai Alps beckon with lofty adventures. High above the village of Neustift, a snow-covered glacier dominates the landscape and allows for skiing all year round. Hiking is a popular spring through fall activity. Food, drink, and accommodations are readily available at Alpine Huts, the typical high-altitude hostels of the region. They are conveniently located a few hours' hike away from each other, giving everyone the opportunity to design a personal plan for lunch stops and overnight stays. The glacier is a great arena for ice climbers to test their skills. On this slippery slope, proper equipment is a must. you have bad conditions like today, it's absolutely necessary to have good crampons. It helps you to have a good grip in the ice. When you're climbing in ice, it's very important to have a good ice axe. It helps you to get across the crevices and up the ice wall. All this equipment is for rock and ice climbing. It's produced in the Stubai Valley. Just east of Innsbruck, the town of Hall affords one of the jewel reflections of medieval life on this journey. Rottenberg, on the banks of the Inn River, is known for the delicate art of glassblowing and engraving. A highlight of the German Alps is Berchtesgaden. This historic town lies clustered at the base of the dominant Batzmann mountain. It is a center for outdoor sports year-round. Berchtesgaden is, is very well known for its outdoor sports possibilities. And um, we all do a lot of outdoor sports like hang gliding, paragliding, and of course mountain biking, which is very, very popular here. And um, the surroundings for mountain biking are perfect. You can bike even in the valley or uphill, and it's great here. Salzburg is yet another cultural gem in the midst of mountainous terrain. Thank you. 
This is the birthplace of Mozart and one of the world's capitals of music. The picturesque buildings still have their original facades from the 17th and 18th centuries, complete with elaborate wrought iron signs. The towers and spires of the old quarter and the mighty fortress high on a crag cast an exciting skyline. Salzburg is an ideal city to explore on foot or by bicycle. The Benedictine Abbey of Melk dominates the scene from its site high above the Danube River. This masterpiece of Baroque architecture has 1,188 windows and a building surface of over 17,000 square meters. Vienna to Ljubljana. Vienna is the capital of both the Holy Roman and the Austrian empires. Its past and present glory is reflected in the Imperial Palace, which in its oldest part dates back to the middle of the 13th century. Prince Eugene was the greatest general in the empire's history. Archduke Charles was the first opponent to hand Napoleon a decisive military defeat in 1809. The Cathedral of St. Stephen is dedicated to the first king of Hungary. Mozart was married here, and Haydn was a choir boy. Maria Theresa, mother of 16 children, ruled the empire for 40 years. Schönbrunn Palace was a favorite of Maria Theresa, who restored it, and the summer home of the ruling Habsburgs. It is set amidst glorious gardens which convey a sense of vast distance. Vienna is also famous for its cuisine. A short drive from the city, in the town of Mautern, award-winning chef Liesel Bacher-Wagner caters to her guests. I combine the traditional cooking with the modern cooking and I make lighter sauces. This is Tafelspitz. Tafelspitz is a boiled beef with vegetables and with mixed salad and marinated with vinegar and oil. This is Sander. Sander is a pike perch and I served it with a horseradish sauce and with red beets and on the top I have fried potatoes. This is gebackenes lamb. It's a lamb chop with potatoes and leek. This is Buchteln, which is a yeast dumpling with vanilla cream and with apricot jam. 
Here in the Wachau, we make many dishes with wine and with apricot and nuts. Baden, south of Vienna, has long attracted celebrities to its spas, which date back to Roman times. This bath is called uh, uh, Schwimmschule. Uh, that means a school for swimming. It's a bath uh, opened for public. Some people uh, use it for sports, for swimming. Uh, some uh, use it for treatment or uh, recreation. Beethoven lodged here one summer and composed most of his Ninth Symphony. Graz has won many awards for the preservation of its architectural treasures. The city once held off its Turkish invaders, and the armory houses one of the world's finest collections of medieval weapons. It contains over 29,000 pieces, including 3,300 suits of armor. In Graz, as all along the Grand Tour, there is a passion for the sweet things in life. Uh, this is a Fladen. These are Salzstangen and these are Handkaisers. South, across the border, lies Ptui, the oldest town in Slovenia. It brings back medieval times with old houses and churches and a castle from the 16th century. Ljubljana to Milan. Ljubljana is the capital of the new nation of Slovenia. It offers a variety of architectural styles, reflecting the three main cultural influences on the area. The Austro-Hungarian, the Venetian, and the Ottoman. Following an earthquake in 1895, much of the city was redesigned by the architect José Plechnik, including the three bridges and the Dragon Bridge, which bears the symbol of the city. The dragon appeared on the city coat of arms several hundred years ago. In old Ljubljana, an open market thrives within the shadow of the Baroque Cathedral of St. Nicholas. The Postoina Caves, among the largest in Europe, extend for 16 miles. This eerie underground world has been sculpted by water for two million years. Further towards the coast, the town of Lipica houses the stud farm of the famous Lipizzaner race, founded in 1580 by Archduke Charles of Austria. The horses are a product of 400 years of selective breeding. They are born black and turn white in their fourth year. 
No training occurs until they are six years old. The stud farm offers lessons to riders of all ability levels. The people of Slovenia pride themselves on outdoor activities. At Bovec, on the turquoise waters of the Socha River, water sports abound. The unusual watercolor is due to limestone in the soil. Holidays on the farm is a popular way to meet people in an informal setting. Visitors can join in activities such as harvesting fruit and vegetables in orchards and fields. Much of the country is rural and unspoiled, evoking a sense of stepping into the past. Even the small towns whisper tales of yesterday, remembering the times when Hemingway served there as a war correspondent. Granska Gora is an important all-year-round resort in the Julian Alps. It is located at the northern edge of the Mount Triglav National Park, named after Mount Triglav. Slovenia's most beloved peak. The renown of Bled transcends borders. For many years, Europeans have flocked to this romantic spot. get married in the island chapel, and it is traditional for the groom to carry the bride up the 99 steps to finally reach the Baroque sanctuary of Our Lady of the Lake. Heading west, the Grand Tour crosses into Italy and leads through the Dolomites to Cortina d'Ampezzo. This fashionable town features elegant shopping and dining and serves as a starting point for excursions to surrounding mountain peaks. It is also a center for regional arts and crafts. Tarka 
Kashi is an Indian woodworking technique introduced to Cortina 100 years ago by a British officer on his way back from India. Artisans inlay minute pieces of copper, brass, shell, and wood into mosaics on rosewood boxes. point of the Grand Tour is the stark beauty of the Dolomites. Due to their chemical composition, these rocks have eroded into craggy needles which jut out mightily from gentle slopes and pastures. Though forbidding to behold, these mountains are quite accessible both by car and by train, and alpine huts for hikers abound. On the way south to Lake Garda lies Trento, capital of the Trentino region. It is known for its historic and architectural treasures, including more than 100 castles of various styles and sizes. Toblino Castle unveils in idyllic fashion across water. Once built for military reasons, it has long since served as a peaceful retreat. Castle houses a restaurant where delectable dishes such as wide noodle pasta with wild game sauce and trout sautéed in herbs and butter are served in an atmosphere of old-fashioned romance. Lago di Zeo is a glacial lake in the Lombardy region. Thanks to its Mediterranean climate, sports on and near the water flourish. In the west, the ancient city of Bergamo was once an important military and trade center for the Romans, and later the Venetians. It is divided into two distinct parts, the modern lower town and the older upper town. The upper town contains buildings that date back to the 12th century. Construction of Santa Maria Maggiore, the town chapel, was begun in 1137. Together with the Colleoni Chapel, it is a fine example of the Renaissance architecture typical of this region. The Accademia Carrara in the lower town is one of Europe's outstanding art galleries. Works on exhibit include Botticelli, Bellini, Raphael, and Lotto. Milan to Geneva. It took five centuries to build the Duomo, the magnificent late Gothic Milan Cathedral. In size, it is second only to St. Peter's in Rome. Fervently admired during the Romantic Age, it is still an inspiring sight today. Galleria Vittorio Emanuele II 
designed by Giuseppe Mengoni in 1865, is a noble glass-roofed shopping arcade with cafes and restaurants. It connects the Piazza del Duomo with the Piazza della Scala. Inaugurated in 1778, La Scala has long been one of the world's leading stages for opera, ballet, and symphony orchestras. Works by Rossini, Donizetti, Bellini, Verdi, and Puccini were first acclaimed here. The monument of Leonardo da Vinci underscores the artistic heritage of Milan. The great master himself worked on plans for the city in the 15th century. His famous painting, The Last Supper, is tucked away inside the church of Santa Maria della Grazia. Milan is also known throughout the world as a leading business, financial, and fashion center. North of Milan, the Valtellina Valley is traditional wine country with precariously steep terraced vineyards. Many wineries date back to the 19th century. Entering Switzerland and the Grisons region, the prime stop is St. Moritz, the playground of the rich and famous. And an air of elegance pervades in a rustic setting with spectacular surroundings. The sound of an alphorn adds to the sparkle of the local champagne climate. St. Moritz is departure point for world-famous scenic train rides. The Glacier Express links it with Zermatt, and the Bernina Express crosses all climatic zones of Europe on its journey south. En route to the Italian part of Switzerland, the little church at Silis yields unexpected riches. Its painted ceiling is the oldest Romanesque example of its kind, dating back to the 12th century. The 153 wooden tiles depict the medieval world view, with sea monsters at the borders and Christ's passion at the center. Further west, the Grand Tour crosses back into Italy and reaches Lake Maggiore. On its shore, Villa Taranto has earned a name for its botanical gardens since its inception in 1952. Among the finest in Europe, the grounds contain nearly 20,000 varieties of plants. One of the most spectacular sections is the terraced gardens. Porta San Giulio enjoys a setting so beautiful, it has been dubbed God's watercolor painting. Across the water lies the tiny island of San Giulio. 
a short boat ride provides access to a medieval gem that can only be explored on foot along a circular walkway. From the 10th to the 18th centuries, the island was under strict rulers that tolerated no digression. Ever since, local residents claim ancient spirits linger. The San Giulio Basilica, built by a Greek deacon, is a most splendid example of Piemont Romanesque architecture. The town of Aosta is strategically located on the northwest route to Geneva. Named after Caesar Augustus, it was once an important Roman trade route. This ancient heritage lives on in the triumphal arch and in well-preserved gates and bridges. One of the illustrious Alpine crossings is the Great St. Bernard Pass, known for its scenic beauty and the rescue dogs named after St. Bernard. The moated castle of Chillon on Lake Geneva, made famous in Lord Byron's poem, is a major attraction near the resort town of Montreux. Geneva to Zurich. Geneva is a world center for diplomacy. The Red Cross was founded here, and there are numerous headquarters of key international organizations. The city is built around Lake Geneva, with elegant walkways on both sides, and the Jet d'Eau, its trademark water fountain with a plume of up to 475 feet. The Rhone River flows from the Rhone Glacier 150 miles into the lake. Like so many cities on the Grand Tour, Geneva retains a beautiful old town. It became the cradle of Protestantism in 1536 under the influence of John Calvin. The Reformation Wall depicts the key theological reformers who spread Calvinism throughout the world. John Knox, William Farrell, John Calvin, and Theodore de Bez. Bern, the capital of Switzerland, dates back to 1191. Historic towers, arcades, and fountains are the striking features of its old town. Bern has a world-famous clock tower, dozens of colorful fountains, and everywhere the sign of the bear, for whom the city was named. The cathedral is a masterpiece of Gothic architecture. Its restored portico depicts the Last Judgment and was carved in 1490. Southwest of Bern, the pastoral landscape of the Gruyere region is a fitting introduction to the small town and the famous cheese. Gruyere is an excellent example of a medieval stronghold, complete with castle and church.
Its central main street is lined with period houses that now contain shops and restaurants. <laughs> what better place to taste a fondue? This traditional dish is made of melted cheese and wine and eaten with bread dipped into the mix. Interlaken sits between two alpine lakes. It is the gateway to the Bernese Oberland region. Though a bustling, classy resort, it also conveys a sense of tranquility, especially when the cows come down from the higher pastures. The town is renowned for the flower arrangements along its main street. On the horizon looms the Jungfrau, one of the three famous peaks of the area, Eiger, Munch, and Jungfrau. Each year, Interlaken dramatizes the story of the legendary hero, William Tell. He exemplifies the people's fierce spirit of independence. Da kam der Landvogt gegen mich daher. Er ganz allein mit mir, der auch allein war bloß, Mensch zu Mensch. Stunning views of the Bernese Alps beckon at nearby Grindelwald, a popular resort at the foot of the Eiger Mountain. Lucerne on Lake Lucerne is the favorite among many travelers. Alpine adventures are never far apart. The Chapel Bridge, built in 1333, is the oldest wooden bridge in Europe. Its colorful panels tell the history of the town. Over the centuries, the octagonal water tower served as treasury, archives, and torture chamber. From Lucerne, it is a short drive to Zurich, the gateway city where this whole journey began. The Grand Tour of the Alps, once the province of wealthy young gentlemen, is now an opportunity for people of many backgrounds. It is one of the great travel experiences in the world. It offers scenic beauty, cultural diversity, a feeling of history, and always, in myriad ways, the sense of wonder of the Alpine region. <laughs>